Hello, California Wing. Thank you for joining our 2020 California Wing Conference Diversity Session entitled Innovation Through Inclusion. My name is Captain Jenny Lynn Burnett and I am your California Wing Diversity Officer. I joined Civil Air Patrol in 2004 as a member of the Van Nuys Squadron 128 shortly before I earned my private pilot certificate. I hold complex and tailwheel endorsements with experience in emergency maneuver training, which includes spins and aerobatics. Years ago, I accrued my flying hours while I was earning my ground team qualifications, which gave me the necessary search and rescue skills to become a mountaineer outside of Civil Air Patrol. Over the last 16 years, I've served in several positions, including California Wing Director of Personnel, multiple positions within emergency services, such as a mission pilot, a UAS drone pilot, and a mission radio operator, which complements my skill outside of CAP as a ham radio operator, KZ-6 FAA. Civil Air Patrol has provided me countless learning and leadership opportunities that have overflowed into other areas of my life, which has propelled me in my professional career as a film production accountant. I am grateful to our Wing Commander, Colonel Ross Vita, for choosing me to be his California Wing Diversity Officer and allowing me to select a team who has been willing to assist me in forging ahead. Your California Wing Diversity Team members hold multiple positions within Civil Air Patrol and includes individuals from different walks of life who bring their innovation, professional experience, and expertise to our team effort. Let me introduce them to you. Second Lieutenant Victoria Schneider, Diversity Innovations and Integration Officer. First Lieutenant Ada Hurst, Diversity Partnerships and Outreach Officer. Lieutenant Colonel Charles Wiest, Diversity Advisor. Captain Louise Mateos, Diversity Liaison and Strategic Development Officer. First Lieutenant Gerald Cozy, Diversity Advisor. Lieutenant Colonel Roger Dunn, Diversity Advisor. Second Lieutenant Jennifer Rossini, Diversity Programs and <laughs> Diversity Programs and Incentives Officer. Chaplain Major Mike Morrison, Diversity Advisor. And Captain Jesse James, who serves as the Diversity Legal Officer as a representative from our California Wing Legal Section and guides our team in the area of compliance. Earlier this year, the California Wing Diversity Team began promoting diversity and inclusion awareness through our monthly newsletters. We have also been writing articles and showcasing member highlights in our Civil Air Patrol California Wing Bearfax Magazine by sharing stories or educational content. Next year, we hope to provide a training program and establish diversity positions at group and squadron levels as we pace ourselves with initiatives as directed by National Headquarters. Your California Wing Diversity Team aspires to foster a culture of collaboration, understanding, and mutual respect where the unique contribution of each member is valued. We will strive to facilitate education, outreach, and opportunity for all. This will enhance our cultural cohesiveness in order to strengthen our organization and broaden our collective skill base. Our vision is for diversity and inclusion to be woven through all areas of the California Wing to strengthen our missions and preparedness. We seek to attract and nurture a diverse membership united in the pursuit of excellence. In our Diversity and Inclusion Conference session, which you are about to see, we provide an overview of how our program is relevant to our three missions cadet programs, aerospace education, and emergency services. We want you to be inspired, curious, and we want you to get involved. I hope you enjoy the following presentations. Please let me introduce our first speaker, the Civil Air Patrol and National Diversity Officer, Lieutenant Colonel Elizabeth Cito. Hello. I'm Lieutenant Colonel Liz Cito, CAP's National Diversity Officer. Welcome to the California Wing Conference. When we talk about diversity and inclusion, it's good to make sure we have a common framework. Our diversity program is modeled after the Air Force, but unique to CAP. 
CAP has developed our definitions of diversity and inclusion to give us a common foundation. These are official and will be incorporated into regulation in the future. We define diversity as a composite of individual characteristics, experiences and abilities that are consistent with the CAP mission and core values and reflective of the communities in which we serve. Although we include a list here, diversity in CAP is not limited to specific demographics such as race or gender. As Colonel Ken Lozano, the former Air National Guard Director of Diversity said at our national conference, diversity resides within everyone. Studies have found that organizations that are more diverse are more innovative and successful. Increasing our diversity allows us to access more resources, recruit more members, and allow for more innovation. A step beyond diversity is inclusion. We define this as the process of creating a culture where all members of the organization are free to make their fullest contributions to the success of the group and where there are no unnecessary barriers to success. Inclusion is more than someone having a seat at the table, but having a voice and feeling like they belong. This is culture that is backed up with policies, planning, and actions that create a welcoming environment. One keynote is that diversity does not belong to one office. Rather, diversity should be integrated into each program and every functional area has a responsibility for addressing diversity. At the national level, this looks like the commander setting the vision, the cadet programs addressing inclusion in cadet activities and testing, operations developing the cadet wings program with a focus on including a diverse population, aerospace education developing lessons including the new book Women in Aviation Volume 2, education and training improving flexibility for course completion and incorporating diversity in their training materials, and marketing and communications working with the Louisa Morris Center to develop articles and social media posts reflecting the diversity of our members since our founding. CAP pamphlet 1-10 provides guidance for some accommodations, but this is not an exhaustive list. Rather, it provides a thought process to address members' individual needs and the organization's abilities in the context of each activity and location. Some examples of CAP's inclusion activities are that members can get uniform waivers for religious accommodations and gender dysphoria with the procedures now published in CAP Regulation 391. Some common religious waivers include beards, hijabs, and turbans. Note that all waiver requests must be forwarded to higher headquarters. Only the National Commander or the CAP USAF Commander can deny a request. Commanders may add a recommendation to their coordination. I provided templates for the request to the diversity officers to simplify this process. Another example is when selecting staff or signing off qualifications, focus on what is essential for that task. The member still needs to be able to accomplish the task, but may do it in a different way. For example, a CAP observer trainee without hands used his bare foot to turn dials on the instrument panel to meet his skills qualification. How he did it was less important than what he did. Local units can waive or extend testing time limits for cadets achievements by printing a copy of the test to accommodate for learning and disabilities. We've also adopted a special observances program for CAP that includes those observances recognized in law or US code. This provides role models for all members to see examples of the contributions of our diverse membership. Recently, diversity and aerospace education worked with CAP USAF to conduct a series of Air Force female, pi female pilot panels. Participation came from all backgrounds with a lot of positive feedback. In one example of the impact of this panel, I was able to connect a Hispanic female cadet with dreams of flying as a career with a Hispanic female senior member pilot halfway across the country. Giving that cadet and her parents support where previous she had little support outside of her family. The virtual environment allowed us to reach across the organization where relying on what in-person events would have limited the number of cadets and locations that we could reach. These are just some examples of, of diversity and what we've done in CAP. Uh, I would like to now introduce you to Major Robin Kim, California Wings Cadet Aviation Lead, who serves on the National Cadet Team Youth Initiative Panel. Hi, I'm Major Robin Kim from Squadron 51. I want to talk today about diversity and inclusion and why it makes our cadet program so much stronger. The CAP cadet program's mission is to transform youth into dynamic Americans and our space leaders. 
While many of our cadets do join the military, CFD is not a recruitment service. We accept youth from all backgrounds. Accommodating cadets with unique needs is important to be able to reach as many young people as possible. Sometimes a need can be temporary like a broken arm or it can be a long lasting medical or mental condition. Or sometimes it could be a unique uh, dietary need or religious practice. CFP is open to most teens. It doesn't matter what school you attend or if you're homeschooled. But all cadets should be given the opportunity to participate in as much of the cadet program as possible. Experiences gained during this time in a cadet's life will leave a lasting impression. Whether you're a cadet colonel or cadet airman, you got something out of the cadet program. On recent surveys, it was noted that 82% of CEP cadets earn a B average or better in school. Cadets who join CEP report a 22% increase in school attendance, and 76% of cadets strongly believe in community service. We all want to make sure CEP is accessible. No matter what path a cadet takes in later life, they will have the experiences gained as a cadet. When cadets do enter the workforce, they will find coworkers and leaders of diverse backgrounds. But CEP cadets will already have interacted with so many other cadets and seniors. Encampment is one excellent opportunity to interact with members throughout a large state. Cadets will have to learn to work together in order to graduate. Those participating in Cadet Advisory Council or CAC will develop lifelong skills in presenting and discussing ideas. Even discussing ideas you don't necessarily agree with. Cadets coming from diverse backgrounds will help prevent what we call groupthink. Diversity and inclusion is also important when it comes to access for unique cadet activities. While weekly meetings are important, these events leave a very lasting impression. CAP, in cooperation with Air Force partners, is working to reduce financial barriers for these special events. The Cadet Encampment Assistance Program, CEEP, can ensure no cadet will not go to encampment simply due to financial concerns. Our National Cadet Special Activities, NCSAs, are considered affordable to most, especially in comparison to other youth groups, but there still may be cadets unable to attend due to cost. The Cadet Lift Program aims to make the cost of attending almost free. Flight training is expensive, even before the economic conditions of today. CAP now has ways for select cadets to become private pilots for almost no cost through the Cadet Takeoff Program and Cadet Wings Program. All this is to make sure some of CAP's coolest activities are within reach of all cadets, no matter your family's economic status. I'd like to close and say the Cadet Program is strengthened by diversity and inclusion. More teens get to experience the awesomeness of CAP. Cadets get to interact with a wide array of members. And our Air Force partners have recognized the importance of providing opportunity for all cadets and works in eliminating financial barriers. Thank you. I'm Cadet Captain Aditya Patil from Civil Air Patrol Squadron 10, which is based out of Palo Alto. I've been in the cadet program for over three years now, and I've had the chance to gain invaluable skills that I know will help me succeed in the future. I've been able to help organize CAP and CAMs of over 250 students, lead groups of cadets through camps on Air Force bases across the country, and lead my own home squadron. These types of leadership experiences, where I'm able to direct teams and work at such large events, gave me skills such as communication skills, since I'm giving presentations and take up more teaching roles. I also gained organization skills, since I regularly plan out weekly squadron meetings and events, and interpersonal skills, since I lead groups of different cadets my age. These three are just a few of the many competences that I've been able to improve on because of the CAP cadet program, and I'm confident that I could not have gained so much elsewhere. Altogether, I know that the cadet program has been preparing me well for my future. The California Wings efforts to have a culture of inclusion and diversity regardless of race, gender, economic background, or any other individualized characteristics that we may identify with allows for us to grow and learn in a safe environment. Oftentimes, in our communities outside of CAP, we face various forms of discrimination and prejudice that becomes detrimental to our educational growth as well as our personal. However, the efforts to focus on diversity and inclusion allows cadets to not only feel safe and confident enough to ask for help, but also learn and grow from our mistakes. And we have also been able to create an incredibly strong sense of community around acceptance and open-mindedness. For example, as one of four female cadets in my squadron, I understand that I've always been an outlier in the statistics on paper. However, I've never really felt any form of exclusion due to my gender, uh, and I think partly because of this is because of the amount of diversity and open-mindedness that we have in CAP. And not only speaking for myself, but possibly many other California Wing Cadets, 
Our culture has created a safe space for us to thrive and learn invaluable leadership lessons in a safe environment where these challenges of diversity and prejudice have become minimized. And when we are ready to go outside of CAP and into our own communities where we do face these challenges, we're prepared to take them on. Hello everyone, I'm Cadet Captain Jesse James from Fort Tango Pause Guard 56. When I joined Civil Air Patrol just about three years ago, I was extremely hesitant and wary. However, over these past few years, I've had countless opportunities and experiences that have ultimately proven themselves to be invaluable. From my first Civil Air Patrol meeting in late September of 2017, up until my first Pacific Region Cadet Advisory Council meeting just a few weeks ago, I've had the opportunity to interact with and engage with a diverse variety of cadets and senior members alike. This has contributed to the development of a stronger and more profound worldview as everybody's unique experiences contributes to the conversation differently. However, one of the most important takeaways that I've had in my cadet career was from Cadet Officer's Basic Course in 2019. There, I learned about transformational leadership. This is something that resonates with me and that I carry with me every day because it helps me recognize that regardless of two people's backgrounds, um, using the leader and follower relationship, they can implement transformational leadership to understand each other at a deeper level and ultimately become the best versions of themselves, which is the goal for everyone. Thank you for your time. Good evening. I'm Cadet Airman First Class Editor of the California Wing, Squadron 138. In the two years that I've been in the Silver Air Patrol Cadet Program, my leadership skills have gotten stronger, public speaking has enhanced, I've learned self-discipline, and have gotten stronger both mentally and physically. The Silver Air Patrol Cadet Program is a great way to add some flair to your life, whether you have interest in aerospace or not. There are so many benefits to being a cadet. No matter what career is in your interest, I 100% guarantee CAP will help increase your chances in success either now or in the long run. The very first time you utter the cadet oath, you are part of a family. Silver Air Patrol is understanding that each individual is unique and recognizing our individual differences is a necessity in order to become stronger together. Thank you. I'm Cadet Major Thea Kirkpatrick. I joined CAP as a shy 14 year old and I never expected how beneficial it would be to me. On top of everything we normally advertise to prospective cadets, I've benefited from amazing mentorship from both cadet and senior member leaders especially at my home unit, Squadron 25. Countless times when I made a mistake or my anxiety that I could not lead stopped me from actually leading, my mentors would gently, or very firmly, get me back on track. CAP also gave me the opportunity to be a Civil Air Patrol Process Engineering intern at Cessna Aircraft in the summer of 2019. And from that internship, I got my internship at Bell Helicopter this past summer where I will be going back in 2021. I've always wanted to be a mechanical engineer, and the only time anyone ever pushed back against that dream was when a college professor told me that I should switch to biomedical engineering, because there aren't that many women in mechanical engineering, so I would feel more comfortable in the biomedical industry. I was very taken aback by this comment. After having spent a year in mechanical engineering, I had hardly ever noticed the high male to female ratio. And when I did, I never felt uncomfortable. I think I owe a lot of that comfort to CAP, which has a high percentage of male members itself, but I always felt welcome. And from that, I learned that a male to female ratio does not determine whether an organization has a positive environment. And I think that's going to benefit me and a lot of other cadets going forward in our careers. I would not be where I am today without how much CAP has driven me to grow. I joined as a shy 14 year old, afraid to talk to anyone in my squadron. And now I'm finishing my cadet career with relationships that I will treasure forever, confidence in my ability to be a leader, and a huge leg up on having the career that I've always wanted. Hello, I'm Major Mark Friedel. I'm the Deputy Director of Aerospace Education here in California. And today I'd like to talk to you a little bit about aerospace, uh, the importance of aerospace education, and more importantly, the importance of diversity within aerospace. I've been interested in aerospace since a very young age. Here I am in uh, the early 1960s with my sights on becoming an astronaut. 
This was during the time of the Mercury Project. These were the initial astronauts who started us on our venture into space. Here they are, not a very diverse group, but these were the cream of the crop, the top of the top. These were the guys who launched us into the space program. Well, my childhood dreams of becoming an astronaut never came to fruition. However, I was always interested in flying. I started taking lessons when I was in high school, sold it on my 16th birthday, and then headed off to college and joined the ROTC unit at University of Colorado, where I was awarded a slot to go to pilot training. Now back then, pilot training was only open to men, but in my senior year, the Air Force in its wisdom decided to open up pilot training and pilot slots to women, and several of the women in my uh, ROTC unit applied and were sent off to pilot training. Of course, back then, once you graduated from pilot training, women were limited to tankers and transports and instructors, and then in 1998, the Air Force opened up all flying positions to women. And this, while not actually being diversity, is inclusive and it's what's fair. So we're going to talk more about the importance of diversity again in advancing the aerospace mission. Getting back to my example about the Mercury astronauts, why do you need diversity when you have the best of the best, the cream of the crop? Well, if exploring space was just about launching rockets into space and driving them around, that's what you would want. You'd want those guys. But space is about exploration, it's about pushing the boundaries, it's about needing engineers and scientists, medical people, uh, psychologists even. In fact, one of our own CAP members, Captain Richard Adante, a PhD in psychology, is working with NASA in studying the effects of long-term space travel for uh, crews like going to Mars, how they interact, how they get along on such a long-term project in uh, close quarters. And it's not just about people from different backgrounds, different races, different cultures, different ethnicities. It's also about people with limitations, or maybe what we would call limitations. You know, say you were born without any arms. Well, of course, you wouldn't be able to become a pilot. Or tell that to Jessica Cox, who was born with no arms, had a fear of flying, then decided to conquer her fear, and she actually got her pilot's license and is a licensed private pilot now. Oh yes, and maybe I should also mention that she has a black belt in martial arts. Limitations are often what we believe. If we can challenge those beliefs, we can do so much more. And again, not to knock the heroes of the Mercury program, but we need people from all different backgrounds bringing together different ideas and different perspectives to move us forward in aerospace. So join us in this journey into the future of aerospace and STEM-related career fields. Immerse yourself in the many exciting and challenging opportunities afforded to you through the Civil Air Patrol's Aerospace Education Program. We need your ideas. We need your perspectives and background to propel us into the future. And there's so much to offer from our STEM program, rocketry, our orientation flights, the Cyber Patriot program, Stellar Explorers, and of course our Aerospace Education and STEM Academy, which is put on every summer and has exciting tours and classes for everyone. So again, diversity is not just about equal opportunity. It's not just about opening up things like flying to women in the Air Force. It's about bringing together ideas, people with different backgrounds, philosophies, to make something so much better than if we're just working on our own and with people like us. Thank you for being part of Civil Air Patrol's Aerospace Education Program. Good morning, everyone. My name is Louise Mateos, and I'm the Deputy Commander for Cadets at the John E. Kramer Composite Squadron 10 in Palo Alto, California. I'm also a mission pilot. I'm going to talk to you today a little bit about aerospace engineering and diversity. First, a little bit about me. I'm a Californian, born and raised in what's now known as Silicon Valley. However, when I was growing up, engineering didn't seem to be a career field for me. My father was an engineer, but he didn't talk about his work. And other engineers I knew about were all men. My mom was an, a nurse, and so from a role model perspective, medicine seemed like a more viable career option. Fortunately, when I was in high school, I had the opportunity to attend a week-long camp 
put on by the Society of Women Engineers for Girls. And there I learned to play with machines, learned about electronics, learned to build a radio, generally got my hands dirty. I found that I really liked building things. So when I went on to college, I decided to major in engineering. And after graduating from Santa Clara University, I went on to Stanford to study aerospace. Why aerospace? Well, it's airplanes and spacecraft, which I really like, but it's also being able to build big and complex things. Things like telescopes that take pictures of the Earth. You might have seen some of those pictures on uh, Google Maps. A spacecraft called Orion that's going to take humans back to the moon. And another spacecraft called Juno that's currently orbiting Jupiter and learning more and more about that planet. So I get a lot of job satisfaction coming into work every day and knowing that the work that I do is contributing to a team building one of these really cool, complex products. Why Lockheed Martin? Well, at Lockheed Martin Space, we have a really big portfolio of products that we work on. Everything from hypersonics to the weather satellites we all use. We also build launch vehicles and a variety of satellites for our military and defense co customers. Things like the GPS satellites and early warning satellites that I'm currently working on. We also, also build commercial products. And we have a team of scientists and engineers that are currently inventing new technologies. A lot of really cool stuff that we do. So what does diversity have to do with all of this? Well, as you can imagine, Building these large and complex products requires a large team of people. And if you have a team of people that all have the same background, they're gonna bring to the table a similar set of ideas. If you have a team of people from a very diverse backgrounds, they're gonna bring diverse ideas to the table. And more diversity in ideas means better options when you're solving problems and more creativity when you're building new things. At Lucky Morton, we've discovered that our more diverse teams are more creative and more competitive. And so we've done a lot of work to encourage teams to become more diverse and to bring more diverse people into aerospace engineering. So what does this mean going forward? If you're interested in aerospace engineering as a field, don't let your background hold you back. Find someone to be a role model. If you're beyond that point, be a role model. Be a role model to a diverse set of people that might be interested in aerospace engineering. Understand and promote the benefits in, of inclusion. We want diversity, but we also want inclusion. We want every team member to come to work every day and feel empowered to provide their best ideas and know that they're being heard. And above all, be an ally. Do what you can to help everyone to be able to follow their dreams. Thanks for listening. My name is Major Kathy Brown, and I'm excited to be talking with you today about diversity and innovation in emergency services training within the California wing. I joined Civil Air Patrol a little over 11 years ago and have served all three missions of Civil Air Patrol in four wings, joining California Wing in 2015. And I love that the organization is able to offer programs that just about anyone can participate in. For now, we'll focus on ES, Emergency Services. I'm the California Wing Emergency Services Training Officer, and prior to this role, served as the Group 2 Emergency Services Officer. So ES have something for everyone. As you know, our membership is made up of so many different professional backgrounds, and this serves us well at ES. The great thing is that you can learn and perform any skill, even if you have no prior background, or you may be able to serve in a capacity like your professional background. For example, let's say you're a professional photographer for a living. You could be an aerial photographer in Civil Air Patrol, or 
You could be a safety officer doing something completely new to you. Our training programs are set up to be able to train anyone, no matter their prior knowledge or skills. Emergency services in and of itself is a diverse program from search and rescue to ground teams, our small unmanned aerial vehicles or SUAS. Uh, our air crews, which include aerial photographers, mission scanners, mission observers, mission pilots. Our base staff, which includes safety, communications, finance, planning, operations, and the incident commander, to name a few. There are many more. Diversity is important to me, and I want to make sure that everyone knows that they have a home in emergency services, especially here in the California wing. So we have just scratched the surface on the diversity of folks in emergency services and the emergency services program itself. I should also mention that the amazing wing ES training staff, which is just as diverse with multiple females, multiple different ethnic and age groups, and as many professional backgrounds as members on the team. I wanna talk now about innovation in ES. Our programs are changing as our customer needs and requests are changing. We're working to reinvent ourselves to meet these challenges. For example, due to COVID, we were asked to support local communities and school districts in handing out meals to students who would normally get those meals at school, but were now not able to get those. We were able to spool this mission up quickly using our traditional base staff model but we transitioned to a virtual base staff, thanks to the help of a few members with expert technical skills. Our customers have also been asking for new imaging products. For the past several decades, we have used Nikon cameras to provide images. Our aerial photography team accepted the challenge and has wowed our customers with things like ortho-rectified, geo-referenced imaging. Did you write that down? Okay, kidding. So basically, um, you could take, you could look at Google Earth, which will give you a snapshot in time, a satellite image, and you could take the photos that we have um, that are either rendered through in house uh, programs or third party that are geo referenced. So it can take one lap long, one exact location, and overlay it to the same exact location. Um, and you could do this for an entire community. And take the old satellite version and our new version that we just took and show it to say FEMA post a fire disaster and they can compare the two to see what the um, damage is in a general area. So this is just to name a couple of the changes that we've had in recent um, months over the last year. We're working on so many new and innovative ideas like adding cameras and small unmanned aerial vehicles to our ground teams. And we need you to join us. Together, we achieve great things. We're able to achieve all these things through collaboration and teamwork, both within ES and sometimes through working with the other CAP groups, such as operations, cadet programs, or aerospace education. We're also expanding to be able to change how we exercise so that we're not just exercising internally, but we're reaching out to those external partners as well to continue our diversity, uh, reaching out to say Cal Fire to try to participate with them and exercise with them and not just work with them during real world missions. So these are just to name a few. Before closing, I have a message for our cadet members. We need you in emergency services and not just as a participant, but as leaders. Did you know that we have cadet ground branch directors and that you can be a cadet ground team leader? This is just one area. There are roles in air crew, there are roles in base staff, and yes, a few of those have age restrictions, but there are many that do not. And this is one area where I want to increase diversity. Your leadership makes us all better. In closing, to all members, seniors and cadets, there is something for you in emergency services. Start 
by reaching out to your squadron emergency services officer. And I hope to see you at an event soon. Thank you so much. And I hope you enjoy the rest of this session and the conference. Have a good afternoon. Well, hello. I would like to uh, introduce everybody to First Lieutenant Gerald Cozy. Um, Gerald, tell me a little bit about yourself. <laughs> As I have silence in the background. Timing is everything. That That's what I used to do. <laughs> That's what I used to do. So, um, Tell me a little bit about yourself and, and what you're doing, uh, what you do for CAP. Well, uh, currently I am a first lieutenant in the Southern California Squadron, Squadron 35 out of Whiteman Airport. I am, I've been in the uh, Civil Air Patrol organization for a little over four years and I have um, been doing different things uh, in that organization, both uh, you know, internally and, and uh, and on, and on the air crew side because I'm a pilot. And I came in as a pilot and wanted to do something as a pilot. Uh, was able to uh, go through the training and uh, become a uh, mission pilot eventually and make the uh, make that transition. Uh, but I also do uh, stuff for the, the squadron. I'm a deputy commander for our squadron. I'm also a, a group uh, operations officer. And I do a little bit for the wing. Uh, uh, as a diversity advisor, and um, I coordinate the uh, Red Bird uh, Simulator Program. Uh, my background, uh, my background, I am retired uh, from the fire department, uh, LA County Fire Department, for about, uh, for, I worked there for 35 years, got the, uh, the ranks uh, from firefighter, firefighter specialist, or apparatus operator, uh, paramedic, uh, I was a, a captain, battalion chief, and retired as an assistant chief, uh, managing uh, a <laughs> very um, large uh, area in, in northern Los Angeles County, and uh, which included 21 stations, two battalions, 21 stations, and we um, uh, had a um, had a also you know ancillary duties uh, as well. I was able to uh, uh, work a. Uh, our urban search and rescue program as a task force leader uh, went on many uh, task force uh, urban search and rescue assignments uh, from uh, the uh, Oklahoma City bombing in uh, 1995 to uh, the uh, Haiti earthquake in 2010 and many incidents in between also um, I was a well, I, I I've been a part of uh, incident management teams, both internally and externally to the uh, fire department. I uh, worked with the Forest Service uh, for about 11 years uh, with their incident management team, uh, traveling all up and down the state of California, uh, Arizona, Oregon, and uh, little parts of Nevada uh, to manage uh, wildland fire incidents. Uh, my, my specialty was air operations, so I was uh, the air operations direct branch director for the uh, incident management team and handling all the resources uh, to put the fires out. As a 35-year veteran working for the fire department, can you tell me your um, from your professional experience and your civil air patrol experience, how do different agencies work together on a mission? Well, coming from my background with the fire department, uh, uh, yeah, we can put out fires, but fires are a particular skill set. There's other things that are needed during the course of an incident, and you can't do everything by you know <laughs> by yourself or with your with your own organization. So you have to bring others in in order to uh, help uh, mitigate the uh, the situation. Uh, that's where um, a unified command comes in, uh, where either you're working with another jurisdiction, uh, another fire agency, you're working with uh, law enforcement, uh, you're working with cooperating uh, agencies uh, like the Red Cross, uh, utility companies, Civil Air Patrol, uh, things of that nature to, uh, um, to be able to take a, to an incident and get to the end of it uh, successfully. Uh, we uh, we have a lot of um, talented resources uh, that are out there uh, in all of these agencies, 
and Civil Patrol, we, we bring in, we bring a unique skill set because we have members, we have uh, our resources are our members, our equipment, you know, we have aircraft, we have ground team uh, vehicles, uh, we have communications equipment, and we can marry those all together uh, as we needed to uh, to help uh, help an incident out. So tell me about CERT. Well, CERT stands for Community Emergency uh, Response Team. And what CERT does, it brings a avenue of dis disaster preparedness into the general public's hands. Uh, I do believe in CERT. I think it's a very, very uh, important program. Uh, Colonel Ross Vita, he believes in CERT as uh, a part of uh, the California Wing initiative to get all members CERT certified. So I think that CERT's a very, very important tool that uh, everybody should have. My message to the cadets, don't let anybody spoil your dreams. If you have dreams to be an astronaut, there's nothing stopping you from go, you know, taking those dreams and, and putting it to reality. Let, keep going. If you have dreams of uh, being um, uh, a, a doctor or a firefighter or you want to be an actor, any of those dreams, anything is possible. Don't let anybody spoil it and say you can't do it. Hello, everyone, and thank you for attending this session today. It's been my privilege over the past several months to coordinate and support the diversity programs of California Wing and of all the other Pacific region diversity programs. It's been truly heartening to see the efforts of our diversity officers coming to fruition through conferences like this one, through newsletters, through discussions, through presentations. We've seen our diversity officers coordinating with our PAOs, with recruiting and retention, and with our wing commanders and staff to get out the message to our membership about what diversity and inclusion really are and how they can benefit our mission. There's sometimes an inaccurate perception within Civil Air Patrol about what diversity really means. It's sometimes interpreted to mean simply, we need more female pilots. And while that may be true, that's really not what our diversity program is all about. As you've seen from today's presentations, diversity is not just about what our membership looks like, but more importantly, how we can best utilize everyone's skills and capabilities to forward our mission. As an all-volunteer organization, our greatest resource isn't our aircraft or our vehicles or our budgets or our equipment. Our greatest resource is our membership. If we aren't making the full use of everyone's skills and capabilities, we're squandering our greatest resource. By removing obstacles to full participation, we can increase our efficiency and we can better respond to the needs of our clients and our members as well. It is my great hope that the diversity program will be so successful that we eventually no longer need a diversity program simply because diversity and inclusion have become an integral part of everything that we do in Civil Air Patrol. You can help make this goal a reality. Listen to your fellow members. Ask how you can help. If there's an obstacle, try to find a way around it. If you need help, reach out to your squadron commander. Call your diversity officer. Email me. I'm happy to help. As with everything in Civil Air Patrol, it really takes all of us to accomplish the mission. Thank you for attending this presentation today. I hope you enjoy the rest of the conference. A big thank you to our National Diversity Officer, Lieutenant Colonel Elizabeth Cito, our Pacific Region Diversity Officer, Captain Suzanne Vita, and all of our California Wing speakers. As you can see, diversity and inclusion has always been a part of our lives and our missions because it's how we communicate and engage with others. Diversity and inclusion is now being recognized as a new program which encompasses all specialties and areas within Civil Air Patrol. Most importantly, thank you to all of our members who serve in Civil Air Patrol. You are the foundation of everything we do. We become a member of Civil Air Patrol and make a commitment to serve. We learn to abide by our Civil Air Patrol core values of integrity, volunteer service, excellence, and respect. 
Our core values are the cornerstone beneath our colorful tapestry, which represents our diverse membership. Every member is unique no matter who you are, what you look like, or where you come from. Embrace your uniqueness. We appreciate every member's contribution. This is how you get involved. Diversity is the ideal springboard for outreach in the community. As a member of Civil Air Patrol, each one of us by default is a recruiting and retention officer and a public affairs officer. However, always be sure to refer to the regulations for appropriate guidance. If you wanna get involved, you have to become engaged. Here is your call to action. There are two things you need to do. Reach out to your local aviation or aerospace organization and invite them to your local squadron meeting. Not only are you making new friends, but you are increasing your resources, recruiting and retention, and sharing your love of Civil Air Patrol. Most of these organizations also have scholarships and career opportunities. Examples of local partnerships or organizations will be listed in our next diversity and inclusion newsletter. The process of bringing diverse people together creates a stronger sense of shared investment and accountability for developing the best solutions. Those involved with creating these solutions or bringing our missions together have added their thinking and skilled backgrounds to the information gathering and decision making process. As we have learned from our National Diversity Officer, Lieutenant Colonel Liz Cito, inclusion is the process of creating a culture where all members of our organization are free to make their fullest contributions to the success of the group and where there are no unnecessary barriers to success. Number two, share stories. Sharing stories is an excellent way to connect and make our organization one family and valuing each other. There are so many forums within Civil Air Patrol where we can share. If you need some ideas, check out our next California Wing Diversity and Inclusion newsletter. It's important to share stories and I'll tell you why. I knew a 100 year old woman pilot at my church. I never had a reason to speak to her until I found out that she was a pilot. It turns out that she flew for Civil Air Patrol during World War II. I wrote an article about her, performed extensive research, and sponsored her for the Civil Air Patrol World War II Congressional Gold Medal. That woman was Lieutenant Colonel Jerry Truesdell. I hosted an exceptional service award ceremony for her. I flew her around Van Nuys Airport while 50 of her closest friends and family looked on. To my surprise, I was asked to represent California Wing and guide Colonel Truesdell to Washington, D.C. for the December 10th, 2014 televised Civil Air Patrol World War II Congressional Gold Medal Ceremony in the Capitol Building. She was one of three centenarians in Civil Air Patrol, had met Amelia Earhart when she started taking flying lessons, and was featured on NBC in Washington, D.C. Colonel Truesdell told me after the trip that this was the best thing that had ever happened in her life. This little lady, 100 years of age, from church, turned out to be a hero. Get out there and share those stories try to make a difference in someone's life. Similar to our California Wing diversity and inclusion newsletters, I like to close by sharing a tip and a quote. Your conference diversity tip is, be compassionate, it all begins with you. I leave you with this quote and the author is unknown. Innovation has three essential elements, creativity, daring to dream, strategy, decoding the dream, and execution, delivering the dream. Thank you for joining us today. Hope you enjoy the rest of your 2020 California Wing Conference.